it's going to affect people differently because it's not universally a killing agent. It's going to have different effects in different parts of your tissues. Hey, I'm Dr. A. This is my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about a big topic, a lot of interest, which is vitamin C therapy in cancer patients. Talking about cancer under any circumstances can be fraught with all sorts of concerns and cautions and everything else. What I want to do today is talk about a very commonly requested treatment, which is high-dose intravenous vitamin C in cancer therapy. What does it do in cancer? Is there any research on it in cancer? Is it safe? Is it contraindicated if I'm doing other cancer therapies? How do I get it? How do I get it done safely? What kind of dose ranges are we talking about? What's the best way to make sure that I'm getting the best experience with a high-dose vitamin C approach? So the first thing I think, which is extremely logical and wonderful question is, what's the general impact in a cancer patient to doing intravenous vitamin C therapy? The first thing that I would normally tell a patient is that unlike a chemotherapeutic approach that may indiscriminately damage damage both cancer tissue and your normal tissue, vitamin C is unique in that it is often used differently between cancer cells and normal cells. That's a big difference as a cancer therapeutic. The other thing that I think is really important to keep in mind with high-dose vitamin C as a patient is it's going to affect people differently because it's not universally a killing agent. It's going to have different effects in different parts of your tissues. And because it works alongside of not only your cells, but your immune system function, how it may be beneficial and help you is going to be different from person to person. So most of the time we don't see that, oh, it's always good in this type of cancer, but what we see is it affects this type of a person with an immune system in this type of a setup differently than it affects this type of person whose immune system may be better or worse functional, and they could have two different types of cancers or the same cancer. So the impact is very broad in that respect. Sometimes the impact benefits are that it keeps your normal tissues healthy and allows you to do better with the other cancer treatments that you're doing. Sometimes you, what you notice more is that it helps to get your immune system focused so that it can deal with the cancer as the immune system is supposed to in a more effective and efficient manner. So the impact on your cancer may be very different from person to person, and generally you don't know until you try it, until you do it. Now, one thing that we'll tell patients, because this is something we found in, in our research, was you generally, and we'll talk about this in logistics, have to do a certain amount of I intravenous high-dose vitamin C to figure out if it's the right thing or not. You can't usually tell by one or two treatments, unfortunately. The first thing that you want to know is, have your laboratory tests been done to show that the two major areas of potential danger have been checked out and ruled out? So what are those? The first one is a genetically inherited deficiency in an enzyme called G6PD. And if I have a genetic deficiency there, I do not handle oxidative therapies well. So if we have a G6PD positive patient, we will not use high-dose vitamin C and we will go for other types of treatments because they're not going to handle that. Now, depending on your genetic heritability, that G6PD deficiency may be more common or less common, but the bottom line is that needs to be checked before you do any high-dose vitamin C. The next thing is the second area of big danger potentially is how are your kidneys functioning? You might say, well, most people's kidneys should be good. Well, something to consider is that there's a lot of people with chronic illness such as diabetes and other things who then develop cancer and their kidneys may not be that good to start with. Also, a lot of cancer therapies you may have had may have decreased your kidney function. So we always check kidney function as part of the comprehensive metabolic profiles to make sure that there's nothing wrong with your kidneys so that the kidneys can deal with the high-dose vitamin C that's going through. The other question that comes up that I was asked to address is, is high-dose vitamin C or vitamin C in general contraindicated if I'm doing chemotherapy, radiation, 
and surgery. So this is something that we were asked at the research center. We're doing that research I told you about daily. So one of the things that I did as a part of this research to help communication between the medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, and the integrative oncology team was to do a research summary of what do we know about vitamin C and, say, chemotherapies. Now, what surprised everybody a bit was not only is vitamin C studied with chemotherapy, that was a surprise, but also vitamin C is studied with a large number of chemotherapies, which was another surprise. But the biggest surprise was of all of the things that I put into the research review for communication with the other oncology teams is the number of chemotherapies where vitamin C was synergistic, so it helped out, it gave some benefit, was the majority. The, the thought before was, well, chemotherapy is usually, you know, going killing and doing these things and vitamin C may shut it off. What it turned out in the research is that vitamin C was actually synergistic. Almost all cases, there were only two chemotherapy drugs that were at all an issue. And basically, if you separated the vitamin C by just a little bit, there was no issue there either. There was just benefit from vitamin C, okay? So obviously, this is the kind of thing that has to be worked out with your practitioner is doing the vitamin C, because sometimes it's just not a good idea to give them too close together for other reasons. Not that the two drugs have a problem, but your kidneys have to deal with a bunch of chemotherapy. If you get an IV of you know certain chemos, kidneys get a lot of... Uh, work there. Hey, you don't want, you know, a big dose of vitamin C going through. Now, I have colleagues who are in medical oncology and they will do their chemotherapy and a moderate high dose vitamin C. So there's shades of gray with vitamin C and do them on the same day. That's fine because they're they're balancing both of the drugs. But if you are going to one place getting your chemo and it's a very kidney taxing chemo, even if they're really good together, the drug and the vitamin C, I will still have you do the vitamin C maybe a day before or something, so they both have their own time with your kidneys. So safety is in the purview of the person managing your high-dose vitamin C. That's the big thing there. The logistics, so how do you do this? How much time does it take? What can you expect? All of these things. Well, as I mentioned earlier, there's a certain number of treatments we found statistically you had to do before you could see an outcome. And what that number is, is around 15, so 15 to 20 high-dose vitamin C treatments. We were doing, on average, two per week with patients. So you're looking there at somewhere between seven and 10 weeks worth of treatment. Usually, we would do them a day apart or two days apart, so the body sort of had time to take full advantage of the vitamin C, have a little rest, and then do the vitamin C again. Now, in the olden days, we used to think that, well, we had to do them sequentially, so you'd get your vitamin C, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, something like that. What we found over time is more is not always better, and this idea of doing them twice during the week with a little break in the middle actually work just as well or better. So you do want to know that if you're going to do it, go to a practitioner who knows what they're doing, and you're probably going to set up twice a week for the first 15 to 20 treatments. That's going to be kind of a general norm for you. Then people will say, well, how do we know? Well, that depends how you're following the cancer. So for some people, we would time it between PET scans. That's a little easier because the PET scan is a fairly objective measurement. So we'd wait, you're going to get your, your PET scan this week, and then we do our, a round of high-dose vitamin C with whatever else is being given. And then we would look at the next PET scan and say, yeah, it looks like we had, you know, good regression of the tumors, et cetera. Other people, it was different imaging. Other people, it's tumor markers, okay? Depends, because you're following each cancer very differently. But the important thing is you have some follow-up there during that time. Now, if it's working, what we would normally do is not just stop, but we would start to do a withdrawal trial where we would do, say you were at two, twice a week, we'd go to once a week. And we'd do that for a couple months. And if you were stable, then we'd go to every other week, once every other week, and then once monthly. And we had people that were good responders where they were doing maintenance at about every four or five weeks. So not terribly impacting on their life. What I can say though, is all of these things that we've talked about today 
are going to be considered by any trained and competent healthcare practitioner who knows what they're doing with high dose vitamin C. So you do want to do a little bit of background uh, research and check out wherever you go to get high dose vitamin C that they're going to do appropriate screening testing, that they're going to look at all of your medications you're on, whether they're part of your cancer journey or your regular medications, and they're going to have a protocol and a program that's going to take care of getting enough vitamin C in you in a safe manner. So it's very practitioner driven at that point. 